Next up, we have Rashad Bateman, the wide receiver out of Minnesota, who, you know, for me at least was a nice change of pace. I got kind of sick of watching like 12 different Alabama cutups in a row after doing Smith and Waddle back to back. So here we have Bateman, obviously a big 10 guy from Minnesota. And what you're going to see right away with him is kind of stepped in right away. And, and like Jalen Waddle in many regards, uh, had instant production, right? 51 catches, 704 yards, and six TDs. That's fantastic. Then, you know, we always like to talk about improvement and constantly progressing. Well, you look at that next season and, you know, somehow on the same number of catches, essentially in that ballpark, 500 plus more yards and five more TDs, right? So um, that's a massive step right there. The only question then is, you know, what sort of happened in 2020? Obviously the pandemic shortened season. I know he was one of those guys who initially opted out and then uh, decided to come back. So uh, maybe you could question if some of the conditioning wasn't there, but um, just not necessarily quite as impressive as he was previously, but um, still pretty freaking good, right? And then you look at his pro day numbers, a little bit questionable in my mind, in all honesty, came in, ran a 4.39, which was significantly quicker than I thought he would be. Um, and then otherwise had a 36 inch vertical and a 10 foot three inch broad. Whereas I know some of the height and weight stuff caught people off guard. Um, was listed on Minnesota's website at, I want to say 6'2", came in at just over six feet tall and 190. You know, so all these people who were calling Devonta Smith too small and, and thought they had a reprieve with Bateman. Well, now you have sort of similar concerns there as he's not only shorter, but uh, 20 pounds, 20 pounds heavier, but still under the general positional average, right? So that's sort of uh, the thing there. There are some concerns in that regard. But as we hop into uh, just my grade of him, the first thing you're going to see then as we get into the grade is overall, I'm very high on Bateman as well. Not quite to the extent of the other three, but I think he is most certainly a solid overall player. So kind of breaking down grade by grade, first off route running, I would say the most refreshing thing with him is that he was far and away and just flat out clearly Minnesota's number one uh, passing weapon, their number one offensive weapon. He was their just number one offensive player, probably their number one overall player, right? And I feel like because of that, because he didn't have, you know, say Jamar Chase, right? In 2019, he has Justin Jefferson inside. He has Terrence Marshall on the opposite side. Smith and Waddle, by example, they not only have each other, they also have uh, Jerry Judy as well as a fantastic running game. Whereas Bateman was more so on his own, right? And I think that that led to, um, not only him having to be a little bit more creative to get open, but I think it led to Minnesota um, giving him a little bit more diverse uh, selection of routes to run than those other guys, right? And, you know, in saying that, I do think the sort of just route tree, as people say, oh, you can run the route tree. Well, you know, every route is just planting and cutting, right? For me, it's more so how you're selling that route compared to various other routes, right? It's like in the last video where I talked about how Waddle, everything looks like a, a straight vertical streak. I think Bateman more so doesn't do that as much as just utilizing various steps and missteps and sort of misdirections in terms of, you know, getting to the top of his route stem. And, you know, if he's running a post, he might take a quick step out with his left foot, make that defensive back think it's a corner, and then he's going to cut it back inside, right? Um, he does a very good job on, on routes like that. That's why I gave him 18. I didn't think he was quite as adept as maybe a Devonta Smith was, although he was pretty dang close, right? So right in that range. I didn't think, though, that the speed and quickness was there. And that's why I'm questioning uh, a lot of these pro day numbers because he did not look like a 4-3-9 guy, at least on film in my eyes. Um, it actually looked like, in comparison, it looked like the Smith and Waddle film was on 1.25x speed, right? And I had to go and check my browser to make sure I wasn't artificially making them faster and Bateman slower. But um, I just didn't quite see the comparison there. And that was really the first of two sort of larger setbacks from uh, that first group of three to Bateman, right? I felt like each of them, Chase, Waddle, and Smith, were all significantly quicker as well as fast, right? The second area where I thought there was a little bit of variation was in their hands, right? I, I just felt like those other three guys were a little bit better at that catch point in terms of securing and then obviously transitioning into a uh, runner after the catch, right? It felt like there were times where Bateman would maybe get ahead of himself, right? He'd be planning one, two steps ahead, have these sort of concentration drops. He also from time to time would let the ball kind of eat him up a little bit, get into his body too much. And occasionally he'd have to catch it with his body. Other times it would just bounce off, right? Um, not nearly as bad as some of the guys that are coming up in all honesty, but um, it was something that I thought was a noticeable step back from the, the top three. In terms of the contested catches, you know, this one was kind of funny because um, when I was initially watching him, I was still under the impression that he was 6'1", 6'2", come to find out he's barely six feet tall. But 
Um, I felt like he played bigger than he was most certainly then because, you know, in those 50, 50 jump ball sort of situations, I felt like he was very solid, right? Very solid at not only locating the ball as you'll see in that next raid, but um, just very solid at having the sort of strength to pull it down and secure that catch. I thought he was very good there. And, you know, with him, I did feel like he got a little bit more practice at it maybe than some of those other guys because of the lack of other receiving options, right? A lot of times you'd see balls kind of forced his way just by the nature of him being their best player. I feel like that kind of helped him out and gave him gave him reps at something that he maybe wouldn't have if he was at an Alabama or LSU. So I gave him an eight out of 10 there. I feel like he was very solid. In terms of his tracking and body control, I would argue that was probably his best uh, sort of trait and um, really what he made look the easiest, right? He had quite a few just kind of circus level catches, right? And uh, a lot of plays where he would just kind of, you know, I, I said his hands were a little bit inconsistent right? and sometimes he'd let the ball get a little bit too close, but then other times he would just kind of be plucking them out of the sky and showing off great body control, right? Full extension, you know, almost laying out to catch some of these balls. Uh, the occasional toe tap on the sideline, by example, there were just a lot of plays where I felt I was wildly impressed by uh, not only the body control, but also the tracking, right? Next to Jamar Chase, he probably was the second best of the four to this point. Um, at just being able to adjust midair and sort of contort his body to haul in these respective passes, right? I feel like he did a very good job there. And, you know, as much as I sort of criticized, you know, his hands were slightly behind those other guys. There were a lot of catches that those other guys might not have even been in, in contention of making, but because of that sort of contortionist like ability, he turned something out of nothing. Right. And it, it was just very impressive in terms of his rack ability then in terms of, you know, transitioning from receiver to runner and making plays on the ground, not up to the par of the other three guys, but generally solid, right? Again, it's tough to criticize him. I will say, I, again, did not see that four, three, nine speed. Although I did see why he didn't run the shuttle or three cone, right? Because I would not be shocked if his sort of change of direction and short area quickness isn't up to par uh, with some of the other top receivers in the class. I just didn't see that sort of agility and elusiveness, right? He wasn't necessarily making guys miss, uh, just generally solid, I'll say. In terms of his release, kind of similarly to his route running, I feel like he did a good job of constantly changing things up, right? Altering his speeds, uh, you know, using stutter steps, using misdirection steps, those sort of things. Um to just constantly keep his corner guessing, right? And it made players wary to press up on him because he could very easily make you look stupid, right? And obviously you don't want that. So what are you going to do? Eh, really just not going to press him, right? So I think he did a good job there. I don't think he necessarily did a great job in terms of blocking and physicality. I gave him the same grade that I gave Chase and Smith. You know, with Chase's, I said he was pretty physical overall as a player, but the run blocking just wasn't quite there. With Smith, I said he's not very physical overall as a player, but he was super feisty, right, and always willing to stick his nose in there and, and take on anybody that he possibly could uh, to try and help his teammates out, and I really like that. Sometimes the effectiveness wasn't quite there, though, because of his mass. Bateman was somewhere in the middle of that, right? Um, so I gave him the same grade because he wasn't quite as feisty as a guy like Smith, but he also was a little bit more effective maybe because of Slightly more interest than Chase, but overall not as physical of a player as Chase. If that makes any sense at all, it made sense to me. I gave him a three out of five as well. And then 2.75 out of five on size. Um, again, it's just slightly below average for the NFL receiver. Um, I gave him a little bit extra potentially, you could say, because I felt like he played a little bit bigger than he actually was, but a little bit to be desired there, as well as in the athleticism department. I gave him a four. Some people might say, oh, how are you not going to give him a five? Well, because I just didn't flat see that speed. And uh, I have questions about the quickness no question so overall 78.75 what does that come out to on the big board that puts him at an 81.90 which is uh, sort of just outside of what I would consider my first round grades right um, might very well end up being in my top 32 players so obviously I have no problem with him being selected in the first round you kind of have to select him in the first round at that point I felt like he was just a step or two behind those top guys and you know you can see obviously Devonta Jamar Waddle all up there in that sort of 85 to 86 range. Uh, I just didn't quite see that with Bateman, right? He was very good at some things. I felt like a little bit more questionable at others. Hence why I, I would feel uh, much more comfortable towards that end of the first round, early second round in my eyes. I will be honest, you know, one thing that I've seen as of late a little bit more is people saying that he's their wide receiver one or two, right? Um, and I'll be honest, I just don't see that, right? I'd love for somebody at least you know, either tell me my scale is trash or tell me where you necessarily disagree with it, right? Um, try and try and tell me where you would adjust his grade to bump it up. Um, because I just didn't quite see it in that regard. I think that if somebody tells you that, you know, he is flat out better than Jamar Chase, 
Uh, I think they're kind of lying to you, right? And, you know, one thing that I could say is that he very well might have the best rookie season of any of these guys in large part due to the fact that if he goes in the 20s or 30s, he'll probably be in the best situation of them. You know, a lot of people don't realize just how important the situation is. They kind of think that, oh, Justin Jefferson's 1,400 yards. Yeah, he would have done that in Denver with Drew Locke throwing to him and Tim Patrick on the other side of the field. Yeah, he would have done that in Dallas with Amari Cooper and Michael Gallup kind of taking a lot of his targets, as well as the fact that they had no O-line running game and Andy Dalton throwing the ball half the time, right? There's no chance he would have been as productive as those guys in that same situation. So he looked better, no question. But as of the NFL draft last year, Jefferson's traits were not to the caliber of a lamb or Judy. And I feel like the same thing is at least similar in my mind with Bateman and those next couple guys. Would I be shocked if he comes out and has a great year if he's drafted by the Green Bay Packers? Absolutely not. But would he do the same thing in Miami where, say, Devonta Smith might go? Uh, Well, Probably not, you know, and that's sort of the problem because I already know, right? I'm posting 70, 80, 90 of these scouting report videos and I'm ranking them at the end of every video. So people are going to come back in a year, two years, three years and say, oh, how could you have Bateman under Waddle? Well, you know, maybe if Bateman got stuck in Philadelphia with, with Jalen Hurts or Nate Sudfield, whoever even plays, maybe he wouldn't be who you think he is, right? But instead, because he got paired up alongside Devontae Adams, just by example, He's, he's, he looks a lot better than he actually was at the time in terms of the traits, right? Because I don't really see how you can say his traits are better than those other guys, but it is what it is, right? Obviously, that's just the name of the game. I think that sometimes people look at this uh, and they think 1,400 yards is 1,400 yards or 1,000 yards is 1,000 yards. Well, uh, sometimes the, the people around you kind of dictate a lot of that as well. And I wouldn't be surprised if Bateman looks better than one or two or even three of those top three guys early, um, but I'll say as of right now, I don't really quite think that he's up to their caliber. Obviously, that can change. Obviously, he can keep improving, right? It's kind of tough to work on your hands, obviously, but uh, I think that, you know, you could work on your agility a little bit, right? He could be a little bit better after the catch than he is now. Um, He can continue to develop and refine that route running and, you know, those various releases that he's using. And, you know, he's already pretty good. Imagine just a little bit more work and, and he could be great in that regard. So could he be the best receiver in the class? Uh, sure. But as of right now, I just don't think he's there. So for people to say that, it seems a little outlandish to me, but you know, some people they're looking for different things. And um, obviously some people don't even know what they're looking for. They're just looking and uh, you know, anybody can get in a highlight tape, but I would say that when you really put on the film uh, I I think it's tough to put him above those other guys. So with that being said, uh, obviously if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, if you didn't enjoy, tell me why, right? Uh, are you a huge Bateman fan? Do you actually legitimately think he's wide receiver one? No question. You think pair him with Lawrence in Jacksonville and he is the next Hall of Famer, right? He's going to have a bust in in Canton. I'm not quite convinced of that, although I think he's really freaking good, right? Um, and I'd love to see him in a good situation where he his skills are going to be on display, potentially with some help around him, uh, because you know he didn't have much help at Minnesota. And I think that occasionally, uh, particularly in this 2020 season, he could have used it a little bit. So With that being said, otherwise, if you want to hear my thoughts on some of the other receivers in this class, if you've missed some of my previous uploads, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you check out the playlist that should have just popped up on the screen. Like I said, we're 60 uploads deep by now. So uh, there's a lot of guys, if you haven't watched them, to catch up on. There's a lot of players that when you look at their grade on this big board, you might say, be saying, how the heck does he have Quiddy Pay at an 84? Well, you can always go back and check out that video and hear my explanation why. So with that being said, that is all I have for you guys today. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. I'm mic'd up. Now I'm mic'd up. Peace, guys.